Yo, Andrew here, repping Chauvinade with Echo Sierra Charlie in partnership to bring you this mega tutorial on how to vectorize anything and also how to make logos and other one color graphics into vectors. Okay, so this is the hypothetical situation. Here you have a graphic element such as this logo and you want to use it for some design or maybe you want to print it out. But the original image you have is only a couple hundred pixels in resolution and has a white background. Which means if you're trying to resize the image to something way bigger for let's say a poster, you're going to get a really blurry image. And this is unacceptable. This is the problem with the rasterized images. You can go smaller without losing quality, but you cannot go bigger. The other problem is obviously the white background. Luckily, there is a solution called vectors. Vector images are created with math. Yeah. Okay, so let me now teach you how to practically make any image into a vector using Adobe Illustrator. Step 1. Launch Illustrator, create a new document, and import your base image you want to vectorize. Looking good so far. Step 2. Click on the image with the selection tool, look up here at this toolbar, and click on Image Trace. And there you go, it's as easy as that. You now have a vector version of this image. But hold on, you still have that white background. So, step three. After image trace, you should now have the image trace bar up here, and if your image is still selected, good. Click on expand. Now if you look over to the layers, this vectorized image is now in a group. Step four, ungroup. You can do this by going to object and then ungroup, or more simply using the keyboard shortcut, control shift G. I repeat, control shift G, boom. Now the white and the black elements are separated. Click anything other than the image to deselect it. Now click the white part only so that we have just that part reselected and then hit delete on your keyboard. And there we go, boom, you now have your logo. Now, there are a number of different presets and settings you can use with Image Trace depending on the situation. During step 2, right next to Image Trace, there is a little triangle which will open up a drop down menu. Black and white logo is what you'll want to use for a black and white logo, or anything that's one color, really. Boom, done, easy peasy, lemons la squeeze. Um, yeah. Now, let's say you wanted to make this photo into a vector. Well, the good news is yes, you can. I would select the high fidelity photo option. The bad news is that it won't really look the same when it's a vector. It will no longer be a photo, but an illustration, which is not necessarily a bad thing. It just depends on what you're going for. Nonetheless, it is now a vector and you can scale it to any size. And this is essentially how you can vectorize anything with minimal effort. Use the image trace tool. After tracing an image, you can also click on this little icon here to open up the image trace panel and customize your settings. Feel free to mess around with these settings to get the best results for your given project. I typically stick to the preset settings, however, because they seem to work and I don't really like messing around with stuff when it's not really going to be any better. Now, the automated image trace tool is not always perfect. In fact, more often than not, you will not render a perfect replica of what you wanted to replicate. So this is when manual editing skills might have to come into play. Not always necessary, but sometimes refinement is needed. The direct selection tool is your best friend, and you can make little adjustments where needed using this tool alone. Sometimes you'll need to delete a few points and reconnect other points using the pen tool. And last but not least, I often use the Pathfinder panel to literally cut shapes into the shape I want them to be in. If the last three points did not make too much sense, well, I'm sorry. Just keep watching as I demonstrate my workflow with commentary. Okay, so here we have our image imported, the one that we want to vectorize right now. This is a Skunk2 logo. So we want this logo to be vectorized, but we also want it to be pretty high quality because we're going to use it ultimately as a decal, which means we don't want to print out anything that's not going to have uh, clean, sharp edges. So we're going to go ahead and make a copy of this image because we want to keep the original as kind of reference to see what goes wrong when we vectorize it. And... Uh, yeah, so we'll go here to image trace. I'll go ahead and select three colors because we have uh, three colors that we want because we want to retain the red right now. So there's white, black, red. Uh, I don't know what's happening here, but I think my illustrator should be fine. It will, probably won't crash. I'm just going to let that finish up. So when that happens, don't panic. Uh, sometimes your illustrator will just, you know, be working. All right, so now we have our vector version of the logo. You can obviously tell uh, it's made a few mistakes here and there. Like if you zoom in, see this, this should be sharp. This should be sharp. This also, uh, don't know why it came out round. Here we have like this extra weird little connection. 
Um, the bottom text right here is obviously kind of wacky. And there's just like a lot of small details that you can notice that are just wrong when you've uh, when you've vectorized it using the automated image trace you know processor. Before we expand, I'm actually going to go to um, the image pan the image trace panel and see if changing some of the settings will make this look a little bit better. Uh, one of the things I'm really going to be looking for is right here on the original logo. You see there's like a little indent or, or whatever you call it right there, this white space. And right here on this one, you don't have any white space right there at all. So kind of like small things like that, I'm gonna try to see if I can bring it back using some custom settings. Um, yeah, I think that kind of brought this part back, so that's good. Uh, I guess we'll raise it up to 70, see how that works. Okay, boom. I think this is good enough for us to work with now. So we're gonna go ahead and go to expand uh, and then ungroup our new image. We're going to go ahead and delete all the white parts, which we don't wanna keep. And just because I can't really see what I've deleted so far, I'm gonna move this over to the gray background and see what we still have to delete. Here, white part here, this part, this part, this part, delete, delete, delete. Okay, there we go. And this isn't looking too shabby, but uh, as you can tell, some parts here and here, I still want to clean that up, especially right here as well. And I just want to make it look as close to the original as possible. And once we do this, what's great is that we can always reuse the same vector. We can resize it to any size. It will not lose any resolution, uh, any quality when we do that because it's a vector. So even though this is kind of like a painstaking process having to manually uh, edit and adjust it, it's pretty much worth it if you're gonna keep using it in the future. And it's really not that difficult. So now that we've deleted all the white parts, we're gonna bring this back over here to our work area. Uh, and as for this part, I'm probably just gonna replace this entirely with a font that looks as close to the original as possible. So let's just say, for example, we're using uh, uh, Arial. Um, I would just type out racing and then select, you know, the red color and space it out exactly how I want it and just kind of manipulate a font to look as close as possible to that. So that might actually take some digging around in your font library. We'll do that last. The other part I want to teach you uh, what I'm doing is how to use uh, the direct selection tool and the pen tool. And we're going to briefly go over the Pathfinder really quick. So the Pathfinder, like I said, is when you're literally cutting shapes into the shape that you want. So let's say you have a square and you want to make it into an L by having this square not like if you change the color like this, the red part is now an L shape, right? So you can make a new shape by little, like selecting both of them and then you use minus front on the shape modes under the Pathfinder panel, and you just made a new shape. And it's like that gray looking square just cut into this one. And this is now the new shape. If you wanna get the Pathfinder panel up, go to Window, Pathfinder, or Shift Control F9, and you'll get something like this somewhere on your screen. Now there's a bunch of other options too, which you can play around with. There's Unite, Intersect, Exclude, Divide, Trim, Merge, Crop, Outline, Minus Back. Uh, I like to use minus front and intersect most often. Intersect will do something like you have this big square, but you want it to be the same shape as this L behind it. If you hit intersect, whatever the whatever path is in front is going to use the path beneath it that you've selected as kind of like an outline to uh, be inside. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that. Probably not gonna use that too much for this project. Uh, with the direct selection tool, what you're going to do is select something like, what, what part do we want to fix? Say this weird extra part that we don't need. You're going to select these points that you don't want and you're just going to hit delete and get rid of them. So same thing here. We just want to delete all these points that we don't want. And then you're going to reselect this point and then grab the pen tool and click on this point. And then you're going to create a new point. So just with the same pen tool, click somewhere over here. And then go back to this point 
And see how the pen tool gets that little circle? Well, it means you're closing up the shape again. It means you're connecting all the points together to make a whole shape. So we're gonna do that. And then if you go up here, there's um, these two convert things, convert selected anchor points to corner and then convert selected anchor points to smooth. So for this, if you have them as a corner, it's gonna, it's not, it's like the corner is gonna be noticeable. So what we wanna do here is we wanna make these smooth both of them and kind of manipulate these points so that it looks as straight as possible so the top one is fine the bottom one you can kind of tell there's a curve here when we kind of want it to be straight and to fix that we'll also have to move around this point if not we could just delete that too and then connect it with the pen tool once again and now when you only have one point in the middle between these two points here and here it's really simple to make it look more straight because you just make this one into a smooth one and then make sure that it's not doing something like this. Just make sure this is straight, which is fairly easy to do. Okay, so we've fixed that. Uh, also, you don't, you don't want it to go down too much or up too much because obviously that'll create curves that you do not want. So just move it around until it looks like to you there's not really much of a curve going on. And I would use the original logo as kind of a reference point. So depending on where you're fixing, like for example, here, this line and this line is the reference point. So when we fix this and make it into a sharp point, we don't want there to be, you know, a massive difference like that. So if anything, we're gonna go over here and kind of move this point up a little bit right here and see how I'm comparing that to the other line and seeing where that goes and then we're just going to go ahead and delete that point and then connect it all the way from here to here to make a straight line but make sure you use the original logo the original render as um, a reference point otherwise you're going to get uh, something that looks pretty different Okay, so we're just going to keep repeating all of these kind of techniques using the direct selection tool and the pen tool. And there's really not much more I can explain. It's really just you have to practice, but that's what the concept is. You're getting rid of unnecessary points. You're cleaning it up a bit by making it more simple uh, because when you use the automated image trace, it Illustrator tends to make, uh, it tends to be extra. It'll make these extra points that you don't need that's causing it to look kind of not as sharp as you might want it to be. And there you have it. That's pretty much all you do. All right, so I'm gonna continue to work on this logo and make it look perfect. In the meantime, you can go ahead and try this out yourself now and vectorize anything you need to vectorize. Uh, thanks for watching.